in the early years of jazz, so up until and including the swing era, the piano was firmly rooted in the rhythm section of the band. This meant it had two key functions or roles, to play the chords and to keep the beat going. So generally, the pianist played very rhythmically and helped keep the beat. For this reason, the pianist's left hand generally just played chords or notes on the beat, while his right hand played rhythmic patterns generally built around chords or chord tones and especially guide tones, often just playing arpeggios or simple licks built around the chord progression. So by and large, the left hand of an early jazz pianist just kept the rhythm going by playing on the beat, and usually in fact playing on every single beat. So in 4-4 time, the early jazz pianist would just play four quarter notes or chords all on the beat. Now, during the swing era, jazz was generally played by big bands, which had a full rhythm section consisting of drums, bass, guitar, and piano. So slowly, pianists realized that if the drummer is keeping the beat, and the bass player is playing a walking bass line, and thus covering that bottom part of the register while also playing on the beat, then there's no need for the pianist to duplicate the effort. So around about the 1940s, pianists developed the technique of comping, that is, varying your rhythm and just occasionally punctuating or pulsing the chords, often in between phrases. Now this technique was pioneered by the pianist Earl Hines, who's considered the father of modern jazz piano. But it was also used by big band leaders and pianists like Count Basie. So if we talk about early jazz pianists, so pre-bebop, essentially New Orleans, Dixieland, and swing music jazz pianists, so the left hand of an early jazz pianist would generally just play a steady rhythm and just playing quarter notes on the beat, which is sometimes referred to as pumping. So a really important technique that they used was stride piano, which is playing the bass note on beats 1 and 3, and the chord on beats 2 and 4. They also played tenths, so a tenth interval, or tenth triad, which goes root, fifth, third, used walking bass lines a lot. So those are really the three main techniques that early jazz pianists employed, and you see that they're all pretty rhythmically steady. They all play sort of on the beat. The stride and the walking bass line play on every single beat on the beat. Right, so all very steady and keeping that rhythm and that beat going. Now they used lots of other techniques as well, like walking tenths. Now some of you will have hands large enough to reach a tenth, which is great. Do so if you can. But if your hands too small to reach a tenth, then you can play rolled tenths, where essentially you just play the first note and then quickly jump to the second note a tenth higher and connect those two notes by holding down the sustain pedal. And if you've got particularly big hands, then well done because you can play legato walking tenths. So this is how Oscar Peterson plays walking tenths, um, because he has a very large hand and a very wide hand span. So you play a tenth interval with your fourth finger and your thumb, and then the bottom notes are played legato by interchanging between the fourth finger and the fifth finger. So essentially... Right, 
right? So my hand is a little bit too small to be able to play that comfortably, but you get the general idea. So if you've got particularly big hands, then you can play these legato walking tenths, uh, which sound a little bit more pleasant than that really choppy staccato tenth, um, which you're forced to do if you have to, if you can't quite reach the tenth with your fourth finger, so you sort of have to just bounce and sort of chop the walking bass line a little bit, which sounds a little bit disjointed, but what can you do? Another great technique to play is the three-handed effect, where the thumb of your left hand holds down one particular note, while your other fingers on your left hand essentially just play a walking bass line or arpeggios of some kind, or something like that. So that way it sounds like you've got one, two, and three hands, thus the three-handed effect. Another technique you can try is called strumming, which, much like the guitar version, you just play the chord on the beat every single beat. And this technique was widely used by a pianist called Errol Garner, so you can go have a listen to him. Another good technique is the rolling bass. You can also play broken tenths, which is the same as playing tenths, but you just break them into two parts. And then you can play a whole bunch of ostinatos, or boogie-woogie left-hand patterns. Or octave patterns. Now, there are others as well, but you get the general idea. The left hand of an early jazz pianist just played very rhythmically, often just on the beat, on every single beat, or just on beat one of every bar, or even just eighth notes, but making sure you're playing pretty sort of rhythmically and really drive, uh, pointing out and sort of driving that rhythm forward and pointing out that beat. And then the right hand of an early jazz pianist played very rhythmic, chordal-based patterns, so like arpeggios or embellished arpeggios or simple riffs that really outline the chords um, or even the melody often or some variation of the melody, but again with some reference back to the chords and the arpeggio and the chord tones that are actually being played in the left hand. And generally early jazz pianists used very standard chord voicings, so not very adventurous ones. They used either just plain triads or seventh chords, though they generally preferred major six chords to major seven chords. Occasionally you'd find some pretty simple, usually natural extensions, so like a natural nine on a dominant chord or on a minor chord. And you'd also find shell chords, which are just the third and the seventh of each chord. And then when we get to bebop and beyond, so through hard bop and cool jazz and modal jazz, all the way to the present day, um, the left hand technique on the piano changed. Because, as I said earlier, the drummer and the bass player are now keeping the beat going, there's really no need for the pianist to do the same thing, to duplicate the effort. So now, modern jazz pianists, instead of playing very rhythmically and on the beat with their left hand, now use a technique called comping. That is, punctuating the chords, or stabbing the chords, or sort of pulsing the chords, to create a bit more rhythmic interest. So you're not just playing on the beat, sort of a one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. You're doing uh, things that are a little bit more rhythmically interesting. And the right hand of a modern jazz pianist, so again from bebop and beyond, moved away from that chordal approach to, I guess, improvisation or right, the right hand, to playing more individual linear lines. Now this is known as horn-like playing or horn-like piano. 
because your right hand is playing single melody lines just like a trumpet would. Although sometimes you will harmonize your single melody line. And a modern jazz pianist, as well as using the standard chord voicings, also used new, more modern voicings. So things like rootless voicings, or quartal voicings, or upper structures, or other more dissonant voicings, which I have a whole uh, playlist on if you're interested in learning about that. And that really, in a nutshell, I suppose, is a really short binary history of jazz piano. So pre-bebop, early jazz pianists played on the beat with their left hand and chordal patterns with their right hand, whereas modern jazz pianists, so from bebop and beyond, comped with their right hand, so sort of punctuated the chords with an interesting rhythm and creating some uh, rhythmic variation and interest, and played horn-like solos or melodic lines with their right hand, and also used some more modern and dissonant chord voicings. Cool, and that's all I really wanted to cover today. Uh, thanks for watching, guys, and see ya.